So what we're doing in here, we're putting in some 12 mil bolts. So I've got a 14 mil drill bit. And we're gonna have a ladder frame which will come out here, which will hold obviously the fascia and the soffit board. Volvic, you can really taste the volcano. <laughs> Volvic, send us more water so we can get Pete doing that more often. So while well, the guys are getting on with the insulation and Ricky stood around drinking tea, uh, we are <laughs> he had a late break, he went for his break, honestly. That's why he's standing around drinking tea. So basically, I've just got this last rafter cut here, which is going to fix, I'm just about to fix, sorry, into the wall. So we've got a splay at the top. And then what this will do then, I'll effectively cut in some jack rafters from this point here and this point here, which will go into this timber. We haven't got a 400 mil or wide enough bear in there, so we have to do this because of the angle of the building. So yeah, I'm just going to get this fixed up now and get that cut in and they can then be battened and insulated. Tony has got all this cut out now. We just need to do a little bit of fine tuning down that edge, uh, which Pete's gonna jump onto now. We are cracking on, so let's get on with it. So guys, that is another day done. We've absolutely smashed it today. Most of the rafters are in on this side. Just got one more jack rafter to do there. Nearly there on this. We've just got to put in our fillet strips here now to give our, our cast away for the water. So we've got a full either side of our windows. So Pete's just working on that as well. Alex has got on with his tile creases. If you go around here and show you. There's the tile creases down there that we were talking about, just up there. So that is looking absolutely awesome. So tomorrow we're going to crack on with that roof and we're also going to get this steel sorted out, get it anchor resined in, get some holes drilled in it because we're going to put a ladder frame through here as well, get our insulation in. So this will be the main, main job for tomorrow and so then we can get our last prop out because this will be exactly where we need it to be. And we're good to go. So thanks for watching today and we'll see you in the morning. So I just want to first of all show you the tile crease detail that Alex was doing yesterday because I showed you from up on the scaffold but I can just show you a little bit closer now. So this is what we've got. So on the original house over there you can see we've got this nice tile crease. So Alex has replicated that here. It is a little bit smaller than the original one purely because we didn't want it to overpower this wall so it makes a lot more sense just to have a smaller one like this. It's a nod to the original feature but it still looks very effective. So what he's done is basically we've used, we've saw some of the same tiles as what were on there as well. So these are original tiles and then we've built this nice little step out here and then what will happen is the soffit board when that comes on will actually go slide over the top of it and then Alex will be able to then just point up to the soffit board and what that will do, that will prevent any cracks or anything like that forming from around the outside if we were to build that tile detail right up there into this line and get the soffit up to it you would end up with shrinkage or expansion and it will cause a crack to form around the outside so you would see that so this way by sliding the soffit over the top and pointing up to it you're never going to have any of that movement issue there at all so going upstairs what we're doing up here today is we're basically going to get these anchor resin down get them exactly where they need to be anchor resin down then we're going to put some lateral straps over the pad stone over the steel and down the wall just to make sure there's never any movement there. Replicate that on both sides. We're gonna move these rafters out and then we're gonna insulate the webbing of the steel internally and externally as well. There will also be some 25 mil insulation on the top of here, just to basically envelope this steel in really and prevent any cold bridging. And then we'll put a tray, a cavity tray over the top of this. So then any water that does form inside, any condensation will come out and we'll have a drip here at the bottom of this flange. So anything that's caught in there will obviously be able to escape easily enough from there. We're going to get our mag drill as well and drill a few holes through here and then we're going to get some threaded bar which will come right the way through probably from this rafter right the way through into our ladder frame which will sit here just to hold everything in nice and tightly hold the insulation in hold the rafters together hold the ladder frame in so it's absolutely solid and we'll never move anywhere at the ladder frame we'll obviously then hold the fascia board and we'll do the same details we've done under there where the, the match board is recessed into the back of the fascia just to hold everything in nicely and then obviously that will come up to to the window frame once that's in because if you remember this here this section here is all going to be glass this will be one big glass section so that is going to look epic pick that's about it for now that's what we'll be getting on with today let's carry on stay hydrated kids oh brand brand uh, product placement we can't do that yeah. yes oh no we're gonna get a lifetime supply if we do this go on then oh. 
Volvic, you can really taste the volcanoes. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Volvic, send us more water so we can get Pete doing that more often. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh Pete. So what we've got here is basically some jack rafters which are going to come down from our ridge into our timber across the wall. So we've got a couple that I've got to go in. We've done those over there. So it's basically going to be the same as these rafters here but replicated on this side. So coming from the ridge beam into this timber. So Pete's come up with a very nice jig as always. Pete's got a good jig for everything. We made a template from our splay cut there which then has given us the angle that we need which is there, if you can see that, this angle across here is that angle there. I can't obviously hold it on because there's a bit of timber there. But by holding that on then, that gives us our splay cut exactly where we want it and we can just move that to suit. Then we've put a piece of batten across the top of the cut like so and then put another piece of batten up then at 35 degrees up the side of the timber. And what that does, that actually gives us the correct angle then to rest your saw on. As you're coming down the cut like so, you get a nice cut into the display exactly like that. So you've got a nice rest for your saw so you don't wander off at all. So that is just a little bit of a, a top tip with Pete's jig. Thanks Pete. Where's mine? Enjoy your Volvic. Very Volvic. <laughs> Very volcano here. Hi Joe. Hello. Joe is finishing off the insulation in our roof. I am going to start drilling these holes and getting these stubs fixed down onto our pad stone. So we've got a hole over there and a hole over here. What I'm going to be using is some anchor resin. And we've got some bolts to go through. Obviously I'm going to drill the hole in here. I'm going to use the little blower and the little uh, brush to clean out the holes fully. And then we're going to get some anchor resin in there and get our bolts set in. And then what we're going to do also is put a strap over, a lateral strap over the stub and then straight down the wall, same as we would on a wall plate, uh, get this fixed in so it's nice and solid, nothing was ever going to move anywhere. So yeah, that is the next call of business. Then after we've done that, going to get these rafters moved over and then we can get the webbing of this steel insulated, get all the bolts all tightened up nicely, make sure this all solid and then this can be pushed back over then and we're good to go. So what we're doing in here, we're putting in some 12 mil bolts. So I've got a 14 mil drill bit that allows then for two mil of resin around the whole perimeter, around the outside of the bolt basically. So we get this hole nice and filled with loads of resin in there. It's nice and solid, not gonna go anywhere. So let's get drilling. So what I'm doing here, just to set my depth to make sure I'm exactly where I need to be. Gives me enough in the bottom of the hole of resin. That looks pretty good to me. So I've just got a little bit extra, so there'll be a bit of resin in the bottom of the hole as well, and obviously all the way around it. So that is good. So I know now I can drill down to this point here, and then I'm exactly where I need to be. Now, before I take my drill bit out, I'm going to blow all this excess away, because if you blow it out once the drill bit's out, a load of it's going to go in the hole. So just leave it in. That makes life a lot easier. Got a lot less dust to remove. Here. Right, so you've seen us use these tools before. I've got my blower, my balloon blower, and my little pipe cleaner. 
which will basically clean the hole out. So a few scrubs like that just to loosen it enough on the outside, around the edges, and then get your blower in there. There we go, so there's absolutely nothing coming out there now. Really good, I'm pleased, happy that that is now dust free and ready. So what I'm gonna do is just get something basically to plug this hole, because if I just leave that open now, start doing that one, that's gonna get filled with dust. So the holes are all drilled, we've done these, and I've done the ones over here as well. So drill the holes, uh, clean them out using our little cleaners. There will be a link in the description below if you need to buy any of these products, the pump or the brush, and probably for this as well. Uh, so basically what we're gonna do now, rather than using the coach bolts, we're gonna use some threaded bar in here. The reason being we can then get a square washer on top and a nut on top as well. And screw that down, once the resin's gone off fully, screw this down and basically pinch this tight. Uh, the coach bolts, putting them in there, will hold it absolutely solid once the resin's gone off, but this is just an extra way just to make sure there's a good contact between the, uh, the bottom of the steel and the pad stone. It's gonna just pinch it down that extra little bit. So Pete has cut those up now, the threaded bar. <laughs> So Peter's cut these threaded bars at this section and he's gonna show us your little tool, Pete. Got this off eBay, 20 quid, good little There'll bit. There'll be a yeah. link in the description below. Yeah, yeah, basically what it does, just chamfers it all up so you can get your threads right after you've cut it with your angle grinder or steel saw. Because so, there's a bit of a burr left on there, isn't there? Yeah, so yeah, I mean, a bit you can try folding it or angle grinding it, but unless you get it right, it's a bit hit and miss, but this just guarantees a good result every time, so yeah. Wicked, let's see it in action, mate. Watch this gonna turn to shit. <laughs> Look at that, so it gives you a lovely finish. And then let's get, let's get a nut. Let's get a nut, Pete, and see if it's worked. Let's have a look, mate. Hopefully. Look at that, beautiful. Every time. Perfect, so now if you were trying to get a nut onto that, you would have an absolute nightmare. So that is a definite must have. Awesome, cheers, yeah. Pete. Powered by DeWalt. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> right, so once Pete's got these done, what we'll do then is get the resin set up and we will get these in. Right, so I'm gonna use this polyester resin, this anchor resin into these holes. So it comes in various different tubes and sizes. You can get a wider one, but this one is designed to fit a standard skeleton gun. So when it comes like this, it's got a little ring basically around the top. So you need to cut that off. We will get it in our gun like so, and then just use this just to push it out a little bit so you can easily get to the end get your knife yes mate right what i've done is i've cut the top off like that uh, and now what i'm going to do just put my nozzle on it's also a good idea to get a few extra nozzles if they do sell them at the merchants or wherever you get it from get a few extra nozzles because once this stuff goes off the nozzle is basically knackered that's it you can't use it again so if you're doing a few different holes in different places it's always a good idea to get a few different ones few extra nozzles what you have actually got to do as well because this is a two-part resin you've just got to squeeze out this resin until it's an equal color coming out so you know then it's fully mixed so what I'm gonna do now is just get this in right to the bottom and then <clears throat> drop your bolt in it's a good idea to give it a twist as you go in you will hear some little pops as it's going in that's just the air escaping and by twisting it in as well you actually screw in the thread into the resin which gives for a better key there we go i can feel it bottomed out now so i know that's well in nice and tight in there nice and snug so i'm just going to repeat that process now and all the other holes and we're good to go leave this to go off i think the setting time on this is about 30 minutes Okay, so those two are in. We'll just leave those now for about half an hour, like it says in the tube. Uh, while we're doing that, we'll get over there and get the other ones done. And then I'll show you then, just tighten this up. That's it, easy as that. Right, so we've given our anchor resin loads of time to go off now, and it is absolutely solid, going nowhere. So what we're gonna do is get our square plate washes, put these on top, just like that. And then thanks to Pete's handy tool, we're gonna just, this is gonna work, isn't it, Pete? It did work, so. What 
going to do is I'm going to tighten these, but I'm not going to tighten them crazy tight because all that's going to happen is I could potentially loosen the resin. I mean, it shouldn't go anywhere to be completely honest, but you don't want to over tighten it just in case. If it does pop the resin, then you've got to obviously try and drill it all out, which is a nightmare. So. So there we go, I've got them down to where I need to be, so I'm just going to give them a little bit of a crank there. There we go, solid. That one's solid as well. There we go. So they are tight, they're not going to move anywhere. Beautiful, so now all we can do is just trim these off. Jobs are good at it. So I'll go over the other side now, get them down, and then we can get all these bolts shored up properly get these rafters out of the way so we can get the bolts tightened up at the back as well and the ones at the top replaced uh, and then we're good to go. So Pete is now using our awesome bit of kit, a mag drill and he's getting holes drilled in here for our ladder frame. So like I mentioned we're gonna have a ladder frame which will come out here which will hold obviously the fascia and the soffit board and um, we're gonna bolt that through the steel because we're gonna have insulation either side as well. So Pete is just using the mag drill now to get those done. So let's see him in action. So just to uh, just explain, Pete, where well, you got that strap around there. Well, it is a mag drill, which obviously holds this magnetic, isn't it? So, well, basically, what it is, because obviously you don't know if your power supply is always going to be constant. Some people run off generators, etc. That's not the case here. But obviously, stuff can trip out, stuff can stuff can go wrong. You can have power cuts. Now, if you're just relying on the electromagnet, if you have a power cut, your drill's going to be falling from a great height, and this is a pretty heavy bit of machinery, so you just do this as an extra precaution to make sure it don't go nowhere. So if it did fail, it's nice and solid, that's and that's it, not going to land on your head that's it, or it. on your fingers. Yeah, because I think this thing probably weighs about, what, between 15 and 20 kilos? Yeah, easy, mate. It's so heavy. It's, not, it's not a light thing, so it's just, just a little bit of... Just, you know, just make you comfortable with it. Safety first, kids. That's it, you know, and glasses. Yes. <laughs> So our insulation is in, so we've got our closed cell insulation on the outside and our open cell on the inside. Uh, so this is basically all the insulation that's going to need to be in here that will prevent any thermal bridging then through the steel. And now what we're going to do is form a tray over the top of this, a cavity tray will come over here. Then we will get our ladder frame up to that. You can see these holes through here, so they're the holes that Pete drilled and that is going to seat our rebar will basically go through there. We'll be clamped the rafter will go back in here then the rebar will go straight away through there into our ladder frame and then that'll all be clamped up nice and tight just to stop anything twisting obviously we've got this flange put on as well this plate on the bottom which will stop any twist as well but obviously make sure it's clamped in nicely because there's going to be a fair bit of weight on this so we need to make sure it's nice and solid thanks for watching as ever stay cool see you tomorrow it's friday so we get our fry up always a good day so let me show you what we're going to be getting on with today Alex is making sterling progress as ever with what will be the boot room. So we're going to have a door here, there'll be a window there and a window to this side of the door as well. So he's just going to carry on building this corner up today. So we're getting a wall start kit on there and getting that built up. We are also going to be getting on up here. Let's go at the scaffold and show you. Right, so we've got our stubs all secured down nicely. Got our lateral straps over as well, our insulation's in, so we're going to be getting on with the ladder frames across both of these sides today. Hopefully as well, we'll be getting on with these flat roofs. Pete did a good job of getting this scaffold up yesterday, so we've got a safe working platform now to get round, because obviously we can't get through the roof anymore because that's all insulated. Joe's just got a couple of extra bits to put in there and then that is done. So we can get this finished, fitted, and then get the collars on as well, get those fitted. And then the same over this side. 
So we've only got one window going in there, like you know. So there's just one collar to go in there and we need to get all this ply cut as well. Alex has got between the rafters blocked up there as well. So we've got something to go up to. So yeah, that is it. That's our mission for the day. getting our back plate sorted for our ladder frame so what we need to take into consideration obviously we've got our nine inch rafters there uh, which you can see protrude past the top of our steel and they're running in line with the bottom of the steel so we need to take out basically this flange here so what we've done is we've offered this timber up sat it on the flange like you've just seen and then we've marked the back of it which has then given us this line across here the string line now i'm just going to rip this down uh, if we were just to sit our nine inch timber on here obviously it would raise higher up than the rest of the roof and we'd end up with a kick so we don't want that so we're just going to rip this piece off now off both sides then we can get that up and then that will form our back plate then we need to work out the length of our legs because we need to allow for our match board for our soffit board to run up here as well and then from that then we can get all the legs cut and then get our face plate on which will be a full nine inch timber straight on the front because obviously we won't have to worry about the flange because we'll be sort of out here somewhere so let's get on with cutting this timber Right, so our ladder frame is now built. That's one side, which is gonna be the left-hand side here. So this will now sit on top of this steel. All we need to do now is measure our threaded bar, get that cut, and then we've also already got our holes drilled right the way through, through this rafter as well. So we can get our ladder frame into position, get our threaded bar through and crank everything up nice and tight, and then that one will be done. And then we just need to repeat the process on the other side. So guys, that is another day done. We've got lots done today. Our ladder frames are on up here and down here. So they're all in and bolted in nicely. We've got a little bit of adjustment to do here and there, but they are pretty much where they need to be now. Uh, obviously we need to cut the bottoms off to form our flat. So it will match in with the rest of the soffit board around this side. And then, yeah, that's it. We're pretty much good to go. We've covered over the roof for now as well, just for over the weekend, just in case any rain, because we don't want our ply board on there to get wet because we don't want it blowing. So this is all just covered over nicely temporarily for now. Alex has made smashing effort downstairs as well. Let's go and have a look and see what he's been up to. So he is basically smashed all this out. So you can see now better how this is going to work. So like I said, the door will go in the middle here and then a window there and a window here either side of the door. Obviously we've got a lintel to go in across the top. Our steel will sit up there as well, which will go across here, which will take the face of the dormer when that moves forward. 
and obviously moves across as well to this gable here. All in all, a very good week. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please give us a big thumbs up, smash that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so every time we release a new video, you will be notified. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.